To understand what's next for trust, joining me now is former senior journalist Andrew Whitehead from London. Andrew, welcome to the broadcast. It's a pleasure. Now, I'll start with the same question that journalists across the UK in that press conference asked Liz Truss. Should she step down? Well, she has lost her Chancellor of the Exchequer and a very close personal and political ally after little more than a month in office. She has seen two of the main elements of her mini-budget, her economic policy, reversed in deeply humiliating circumstances. Um, she doesn't have the confidence of the markets. It's difficult to say that she has the confidence of her own party. So I think her position now is deeply vulnerable. She has been humiliated by a series of U-turns and by being forced to sack Kwasi Kwarteng as her chancellor. And people are speculating whether she will survive the weekend. I think uh, we can't be sure. She's uh, quite a tough cookie. She won't give in without a fight, but it does feel as if the sands of time are draining away from her. Andrew, it's um, interesting that you say that on one hand that she's a tough cookie, but also there's speculation, will she survive this weekend? Now, until a few weeks back, Trust was determined. She did several interviews to defend her economic policies. Before I ask my next question, let's listen into what she had said. You're prepared to be unpopular, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. What is important to me is that we grow the British economy, because that is what will ultimately deliver higher wages, more investment in towns and cities across the country. That is what will ultimately deliver more money into people's pockets. How many people voted for your plan? What do you mean by that? Well, people in 2019 who voted Conservative voted for a successful country where we are levelling up all parts of the country and where we're driving growth, enterprise and opportunity. Right, Andrew uh, Whitehead is still with us. Andrew, I'm sure you must have heard those statements from Trust Two. Uh, what was the final straw, in your opinion, that led to today's humiliating U-turn? I think the markets made clear that they didn't buy in to what the government was doing, that they weren't going to invest in a country where the sums didn't add up. She had announced, or her chancellor announced last month, the biggest series of tax cuts that Britain had seen for half a century, but didn't make clear where the money would come from. And the impact has been uh, the pound crashing, but also a sharp increase in interest rates. And that's what's really affecting uh, the ordinary person here. If you've got a mortgage, if you've got a home loan, the interest rate in prospect for it is going to be sharply increased. People are panic-stricken by that. There's already a cost of living crisis. And Conservative members of Parliament are fearful that they're going to lose their seats in the next general election in a couple of years' time. So it was the market sentiment and it was the political panic within her own party which forced her to do something to try to regain the confidence of both party and markets by sacking her chancellor and doing a really humiliating U-turn on her economic policy. Right, Andrew, at this point, let's talk about some of the global reactions coming in, some strong statements. In fact, Scotland's First Minister uh, says she has called for a general election and has labelled Liz Truss a lame duck Prime Minister. Your comments? Well, uh, there's no love lost between Nicola Sturgeon, the Scottish First Minister, and Liz Truss. I don't think the two have spoken since Liz Truss became Prime Minister. But I think what Nicola Sturgeon is, is really um, uh, touching a nerve on is uh, Liz Trust does not have a popular mandate. Boris Johnson, her predecessor, won a general election. Liz Truss has not won a general election as Conservative Party leader. She's been installed there by her own party, and there is therefore a question about her democratic legitimacy. I don't think there will be a general election. I think a new Prime Minister is at least possible, but this will be engineered once again within the Conservative Party. But the Conservative Party aren't going to bring forward a general election when the opinion polls show that they would be almost wiped out. Right, Andrew, tell us a little bit about the new Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. He has served in government before. Why do you think Trust chose him for the clean-up job? Well, um, while Kwasi Kwarteng is an ideologue, a right-winger, somebody with a profound commitment to uh, lower taxes, 
Jeremy Hunt is a conservative, but he's much more moderate. He's a cautious person. He's also from the other wing of the Conservative Party to Liz Truss. So it does give the impression that she, she's reaching out to some of her critics within the party. But I think the hope is, her hope is, that she's somebody that uh, the markets will buy into as a pragmatic figure who will go for stability rather than ideology, in marked contrast to the outgoing chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, who was clearly uh, an ideological chancellor. Right, let's touch upon the mood in Britain as of now. All this political upheaval, in fact, I'd go so far as saying weeks of political upheaval, is coming at a time when, as you pointed out, Britons are battling a crippling cost of living crisis. Do they have any faith left in the leadership? It's not weeks, it's months of up upheaval because there was a long period of upheaval which led to Boris Johnson being right. ousted as Prime Minister. Then the upheaval during the contest for the Conservative Party leadership and now the profound upheaval over the past month in response to Liz Truss's initial economic moves and her cut in taxes. The opinion polls suggest that very few people, and that includes Conservative voters, have confidence in Liz Truss. I mean, Clearly, if there is a period of stability and if the markets buy into the new chancellor and a, a change in the economic policy, things might improve for her. Um, but really, her big bet is that she will be able to get economic growth to an extent that people will feel better about the economy by the time of the next general election. That's difficult. It's two years away. It takes a long time for economic growth, first of all, to happen and then to percolate through to people's uh, you know, wage packets and their standard of living. And at the moment, her m room for maneuver is deeply, deeply limited. And her own party is losing patience and losing confidence in their new leader. Right, that's a powerful statement. Uh, Andrew, how will this fiasco impact the political fortunes of the Labour Party? What is the opposition doing to build momentum in their favour? At the moment, they're just looking back, <laughs> sitting back and pointing at the mess that the government uh, is in. Um, so there's a certain amount of schadenfreude, uh, uh, taking delight in the uh, misfortunes of your opponents. But the Labour Party leader, Sir Keir Starmer, has had a good few months. He has risen in his poll ranking. He's not an exciting political figure. He's not charismatic, but he is seen as sensible and a stable figure and those are political attributes which seem to be in short supply at the moment so labor is now well ahead in the opinion polls i mean with a commanding lead 20 25 30 points ahead according to some opinion polls and i think there's a growing public mood that labor is likely to win the next election having been out of power for as long as 12 years Right, just a final question there, Andrew, and very quickly. Um, now, we had uh, Liz Truss say, when she was asked the controversial question, should, why should she stay on as Prime Minister, she said that she's determined to see through what she had promised. Do you see that happening? Uh, no, because what she promised was major tax cuts, and she's already done a U-turn on that. So she's, she's there because she's there. I, I think her agenda is uh, almost dismantled. Um, but whether the Conservative Party will feel that they can strike again uh, and bring down yet another leader, having brought down Boris Johnson just a matter of a few months ago, that's uh, far from certain. Right, Andrew, thank you so much for all those insights and thanks for joining us on Gravitas. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.